Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, I had a supporter do a request for how can you use green screens in Linux? And so I wanted to go ahead and take the time to do this. Now, the first fundamental question you want to ask is, are you doing live streaming green screens or are you doing post-production green screens? Uh, pretty much the same principles overall apply. And so we'll kind of get into this. We're going to do the uh, post-production first. And then I'm going to turn all the computer equipment over onto the computer, probably slightly change our audio a little bit, maybe slightly change our views a little bit, but then I'll show you how you can do green screens on the computer as well. So let's go ahead and first start in with getting your green screen. So you can buy a green screen setup. In my case, I actually just have a cloth that is attached to the wall. And this is a massive cloth. It's a massive solid green cloth that literally covers the entire wall from one end of the wall to the other. Let me go ahead and show you briefly. So that is just a massive cloth that we have for our green screen. And uh, I made sure I to attach it in such a way that there's minimal creases. So as you go around, there's very, very few creases. If you have creases, it's going to form some shadows on there, possibly, that are going to be a, a little bit, provide a little bit of inconsistencies. And so you don't want that to happen. And so if you have like a green screen kit, you're generally not going to have creases. If you're using a big piece of cloth like this, which is probably cheaper, then uh, you just need to make sure that you put it up without having um, all the creases all over. There are a few down at the bottom I couldn't avoid, but I kept them as low as I could, and I doubled them over as, as much as I could. The second thing is your lighting. Now, for me at Switch to Linux, I still don't have the best optimal lighting. I've been working on uh, the audio equipment for better microphones, some camera equipment, HD equipment. I think maybe in the next couple months, I'm actually going to really invest in good lighting equipment as well. It's something I've needed for a long time. Now, what I actually have been using, and the reason I'm okay and put it at the lower priority is because the lighting system that I'm using isn't all that bad. I have two primary sources of lighting that we're using right now. The first is I actually have one of those several hundred dollar uh, fish aquarium day, to, uh, day night LED panels. That's actually what I use, and I end up putting... Uh, I end up putting some um, some white construction paper over it just to tone it down a little bit. If I didn't do that, it would be excessively bright and it would cause a lot of issues. This here is actually pretty good, but the problem is, is it's still too bright. And it, this is why we get some of the shadows casting because it's so bright. Ideally, I'm going to want to get multiple different light panels uh, inside of your, your white softeners and put them out. You might have seen that basically just inverted white umbrellas effectively is, is what we need. And if you were to put some of these over on this side and some of these over on this side, we would have virtually no shadow behind me. Now I'll be able to deal with the shadow. Okay. I can deal with it better in post-production than I can live, but nevertheless it will work. And actually I get less shadows on my live setup anyway. The second light I'm using is I actually have a uh, I think it's a, a 100 watt effective. It's really only four, four or six watts or something. And it is a daylight spectrum LED light. So that's actually what is in the other one. That's in a standard lampshade. And I put that one directly in front of me. So all the shadows are cast almost directly behind me. That way I have minimal shadowing. Ideally, I shouldn't have, you can see a little bit of shadow over here, a little bit over here. Ideally, you don't want any of those and a proper light fixture is going to resolve that problem. I'm just confident enough in my ability to use the software to make that happen. So the next thing what we're going to do is utilizing your application. I'm going to show this on Caden Live and my version of Caden Live is an older one still. I will be upgrading my computer system soon uh, to get more uh, more recent features in there, but the principles are going to be the same whether you're the bleeding edge or whether you're the current one. That is just going to go in and use your chroma key and um, you're going to just literally take the screen out behind me, everything that's green, and then we're going to just adjust the levels so that we get a nice crisp edge without fading too much one way or the other. So that's the type of stuff that we're going to do when uh, we get into the actual software and doing it. So you should be able to see some of that on the screen at this point where I'll be uh, showing that here on, on the screen on the editing. 
So once you've established your green screen, what it's gonna do is it's gonna pop out the background and then what we're gonna have there is a video layer and then whatever's below it is gonna show up. If there's nothing below it, you're just gonna have back a black background on your rendered video. But from there, we can put in either a video, we can put in a photo, we can put in anything we want as a layer underneath this one in the video in post-production, and then that is gonna go ahead and uh, take care of all of your green screening for you. So that's how to do it if you are recording your video separately. So now we're actually gonna jump over onto the computer and we'll record some footage about how to do it on a live setup. Of course, this isn't going to be live, but I'm gonna show you how, to, how you would, would set it up because in OBS, and you can actually record the live as well. So I could record a video doing this and avoid the post-production step. But if I'm doing post-production anyway and I have an ability to set up a video like this on a green screen, you actually will get slightly better results on uh, post-production Caden live green screening than you will on OBS live recording uh, green screening. But nevertheless, you will have uh, good options on there. So let's head on over to the computer and I'll show you the rest. And so here we are over on the computer. So I'm still using the DSLR camera here to record this. I just fed it down through the capture card. I have a capture card set up here on OBS and that's where we're gonna be doing the, the chroma here. And so of course we have our lighting set up. I went through the camera, set up the camera how I want it. Um, I probably could have made the camera a little bit nicer looking, but uh, that's okay, we'll deal with what we have right now. Of course, make sure that uh, your focus is in place, especially since um, I have to turn off manual focus so I don't get the, uh, the camera bar and the uh, auto, auto tracker. So with that, let's go ahead and show you what OBS looks like. Of course, over here in OBS, I'm on the studio mode. And so you can see on the left is the, the staging screen and on the right is the live screen. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the adjustment on the video capture card. Now it doesn't matter that I'm actually on the OBS screen recording because the same video capture card is shared by both of the screens. So anything I do on one is going to automatically apply over the other. So we're going to uh, right click that and click on filters. Now inside of your filters, you have a lot of variety of options you can do. Hit the plus sign down here. You can see we have a lot of different options. Now the one we're gonna be concerned with is chroma key. But if you wanna make any color adjustments, things like that, you can go ahead and add your color adjustments and do that first. So maybe I wanna brighten up the gamma a little bit. Um, I might wanna change the round of contrast. You wanna make sure you do any color adjustments first. Okay, whoa. And let's go ahead and bring that back down. <laughs> I'd go full black and white too. Ooh, that will mess with the green screen for sure. All right, so there we are. So we're gonna go ahead and stick with this as our color options. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add a chroma key. Now it might automatically detect green because green is kind of the default color type. If you're doing a blue screen, you wanna use that. Blah, I look like a devil or somebody needs to shave, I don't know. Um, you can do magenta. Oh, that's why you don't use magenta. Um, it tends to get the pink out of your face. Or you can do something altogether custom, in which case you can select what color. Now, if you want to manually select it, just go ahead and hit the chroma key off, hit the select a color, and then you, we want to hit pick screen color and just grab something on your screen there, and then re-enable that. Now, you're always going to need to make adjustments. So here's where you make it smooth where you can see here will give me the semi-transparency. So I will actually be able to see a little bit what's behind me on that mode. If you go too far low, you'll see that bright white edge around the uh, around it there. You wanna fade down these guys down until they are adjustments. So you can see right here, I'm a little too smooth. You can tell because around the darker corners, around the edges there is where I'm gonna get a little bit of artifact there. Now that will be fixed when I get better lighting in here. But we can go ahead and adjust these guys and manipulate these two here. There is this one as well, which will kind of give us um, some spill reduction. So it's gonna give us just a little bit more, more fine-tuned control around those edges there. So that's what that one's going to do. And then of course, here's the opacity. I can actually, if I get the perfect green screen but I still wanna be semi-transparent, I can do that. All right, and then there's your contrast and your brightness. We can do all those within this as well. I'm gonna go ahead and 
Reset these guys back down to zero though, because that was best there. So that's actually how you're going to do it. And then of course, what you want to do is make sure that you have something for, uh, for behind you. So I'll go ahead and transition over. And oh, I thought I added a, uh, a background video. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. So we do need to make sure we're on our scene. Otherwise, we're going to add the background to OBS. We want to be on our scene, and we're going to go ahead and add a media source. We're going to do a uh, video. So I'm going to add, I'll, uh, I'll just go ahead and create the new one just so you can see how to do it. Just create the new, the new video source. We're going to grab a local file. I'm going to run this on a loop. And then I have a variety of background images. Here's the silver, uh, the silver sparkles there. Now, that will not show up until I transition again. Now, it dropped it on top. And so you want to put this anywhere below the camera. So go ahead and do that. And here we have it. So now I am here. I have a nice animated background. We don't have a lot of artifacts. And it looks like a really nice, really good system. So this guy here, of course, we are recording in OBS now. It will show the same whether I'm recording or whether I'm pushing live. So that's how you can use OBS to also run a green screen. So again, post-production, Caden uh, Live is going to do that. Pretty much any video editor is going to have some type of chroma manipulation. That's really what you need to do is the chroma key, as you saw earlier in the video. Here on OBS, if you have a good lighting setup where you can actually do it here, you're going to save yourself some steps if you already know what's behind you. Uh, this one's just a nice animated video. Of course, you could put an image back there as well, uh, just the same. And so there you have it. Uh, there is how you can go ahead and utilize a green screen here on Linux. Of course, I'm using Linux Mint, a uh, very outdated 18.3. So with that, thanks for watching, guys, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.